Welcome back to our weekly update. I'm Charlotte McLeod with investingnews.com, and I'm here to give you a quick look at our top stories for the week. We didn't touch on gold in last week's update, and unfortunately what we missed was a steep decline. The yellow metal started last week around 1915 per ounce and had fallen to just below 1850 by the time it was over. The pressure has continued this week with gold sinking to about 1820 midway through the period. So what's going on with gold? Many market watchers believe its troubles relate back to the US Federal Reserve's higher for longer interest rate strategy. At the central bank's last meeting, officials indicated that one more hike is likely in 2023, with two cuts on deck for 2024. If that holds true, there won't be much movement in the next year. With rates looking set to stay high for the foreseeable future, American bond yields are taking off, and that's been lending strength to the US dollar. This week, 10-year Treasury yields hit a 16-year high, while 30-year Treasury yields pushed above 5% for the first time since 2007. Yield and price move inversely when it comes to bonds, meaning that prices for these government-issued securities have been getting hammered. All of this activity has hurt stocks, which become less appealing when rates are high. However, it's also not good news for gold. While the experts I've been speaking with remain positive on the precious metal in the long term, the broad consensus is that the price is likely to be kept under wraps until the Fed starts to lower rates. Some are embracing these circumstances as a buying opportunity in the gold space. Costco has now started selling one ounce gold bars and they're reportedly flying off the shelves. But it's also causing major fatigue among investors. Not everyone is interested in hanging on as times get tougher. We're curious to know what you're doing. Are you using this time to position in gold or are you getting out of the sector? Leave a comment below to let us know your thoughts. As we wrap up, I want to touch on uranium. We covered a number of recent industry developments last week, but the news keeps on coming. Since that time, major producer Kazatomprom has announced plans to end its production cuts in 2025. If you've been following the uranium market, you'll know that as demand continues to grow, supply is becoming a larger and larger question mark. With that in mind, I asked Adam Rosenzweig of Gehring & Rosenzweig what impact Kazatomprom's news could have on the sector. Here's how he explained it. So I don't know that this is kind of written in stone uh, just yet. Uh, obviously, bringing on news that they're the largest uranium producer in the world. And so bringing on an additional 10,000 tons per year of uranium um, impacts the supply and demand balance. But actually, the deficits are so severe going forward over the next seven or eight years that it definitely does not swing this market into surplus. It keeps things very, very tight. We do have this primary deficit in the market today. Um, and which has been met by the stockpiles that are now going away to zero. So the market can definitely absorb it, and I wouldn't be so sure that it's coming online quite the way that they claim. Adam and his firm are very positive on the outlook for uranium, and I recommend watching the full interview if you'd like to hear more of his views on supply, demand, and pricing. I'll leave the link in the video description. That's all for this week. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss future updates and interviews. You can also follow us on social media or click below for our report or any article mentioned in this video. We'll see you next time.